Assuming 95% efficiency for the conversion of electrical power by the motor, what current must the 12 volt batteries of a 750 kilogram car be able to supply for letter A to accelerate from rest uh, to 25 meters per second in uh, one minute? All right. So um, in order to uh, answer this particular question, right, we first have to understand, um, you know, probably uh, energy. All right. They're talking about electrical power. Um, so we know electrical power is going to be equal to the formula P is equal to IV. There's other variations of this. However, though, they're asking about the current. So that's why I want I in here. And they're also talking about the voltage. So I want V in there. Right. Now, recall that the uh, power is going to simply be... Um, the power right here is going to simply be joule per second, right? Because power is watts. And what I can do then is I can just write E, what I'll write is E over T is equal to then IV. And it's wanting to know then the, um, uh, what current, right? must be supplied. So therefore, why don't I just solve this thing for uh, I at the moment? And actually, what I'll do first is uh, why don't we take into account this 95% efficiency, all right? So what that means is that whatever the current and the voltage being supplied by the battery is only 95% of that will be converted into power. So in other words, what we should do is we should, before we forget, is plug in the 0.95 there because that represents now 95% of the current and the voltage supplied by the battery will be converted into a certain energy per time or AKA power. So now what we'll do is we'll solve this for I, all right? So basically all we have to do is just bring the 90.95 on down, actually bring and the V, right? Both of them on down. So it's going to be, so I'll rewrite it and just flip it around. It's going to be E over then 0 0.95 TV. Not TV, that sounds nice to watch right now. Okay, <clears throat> so now here's our formula. So we need to somehow figure out, remember V doesn't stand for velocity, but it stands for voltage. Now we know the voltage, so this is a check. They also give us a time, right? So they're giving us a time of, ex, uh, of this acceleration. Uh, so we do know that um, it is one minute. So we do know also the time here. But now we need to figure out the energy, all right? The energy of this acceleration. So the question now becomes, how do I figure out energy? How do I figure out the energy able to accelerate a car from rest to 25 meters per second? in one minute. So why don't we start thinking about some, some things? So why don't we, we know, uh, we know it's starting at rest. So let's just write down some stuff. So the initial velocity here, I'll write V sub I is equal to zero. The final velocity is going to be equal to 25 meters per second. This is happening over a time frame of one minute, which is, you know, 60 seconds. So, you know, we'll probably need it in seconds. So 60 seconds. What I can do from this information, I remember the formula V F, is equal to VI plus AT. So what this information allows me to solve is for is the acceleration. So why don't we just solve for that? All right, because might it depend on the rate of acceleration, how much power might be needed by the battery? Kind of makes logical sense. So why don't we start plugging stuff in? So this is 25, zero, plus then A times R60. Solve this thing for A, and we realize that it's just simply going to be 25 over 60. So this works out to be about um, 0.417. All right, that's meters per second squared. Now, this acceleration, right, is being applied to a particular mass. Ooh, acceleration and mass. Hmm, how are they related? Oh, right, F is equal to MA. So now I can figure out the force applied to the object, right? So simply now take the mass, 750, and now multiply it by that acceleration of 0.417. Now, you could have done this, by the way, all with algebra. In other words, you don't really have to plug anything in. That might have been more efficient. Uh, might have reduced the chances of error. And as I'm saying that, I realize I'm putting in the calculator incorrectly. And I just did it. And even though I said I did, I still did it anyway. So it might be better to just do the algebra here, but I'll keep solving along the way. So this is 312.5. And what I mean by algebra is just substituting the variables. That's in terms of Newtons. Now you got to think, well, how do I get from a force to a and energy, oh, wait a minute, through work, W equals FD, man, it all comes full circle, right? It all comes full circle. So now, what do we really need to figure out? We need to figure out now the distance the car traveled. 
all right, because I know the force, and now I realize I can find work. And remember, work is just synonymous with energy, right? The work needed to accelerate the car by, from 0 to 25 meters per second in 60 seconds would then be equal to the force that is needed to do that multiplied by the distance. So what we'll do here is we will do force, so 3, 1, 2.5, multiplied now by the distance. So the distance, how are we going to find this? Uh, we have several kinematic formulas uh, available at our uh, disposal. I'm thinking which one might be the best one to use. Um, it probably, I don't think it, yeah, let's use, let's use this one. Let's use the uh, x is equal to vit plus one half at squared. All right. So x will be equal to, this whole thing goes to zero because velocity is zero, so then it's just one half times that acceleration of 0.417, blah, 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 times the time, which was 60 seconds squared, and just plug it on in. So 0 0.5 times 0.417 times 60 squared, 750.6. So 750.6, I'm just gonna plug it right in at the bottom, and let's get the work. So take that and multiply it now by your 312.5, so this works out to be about 2.3 times 10 to the 3, 4, 5. That's in joules. That's in energy. Go plug it on in and calculate now the current. That's all it is. So the current here is going to be, and just think, guys, this is only part A. Yay. So let's take that answer and divide it now by 0.95 times the time, which was 60 seconds. You might see, right, we kept using the time. It probably would have canceled on out if we did all substitutions. And then the voltage was 12, so I'm literally just plugging in all the variables now into that formula from the given information in the problem. And now we're going to get 343. So 343. And that is in amps. Now on to letter B. So to climb a 2 times 10 to the 2 meter high hill in 2 minutes at a constant velocity... Well, exerting that many, how much force overcoming our resistance? All right. All right. So let's get rid of all this stuff. I might even need some of it, but I can't think that far ahead at the moment. All right. I don't know many people that can. What time is it? Hmm. 5.43 a.m. Oh, sorry. Okay, so let her be. This is great. All right, so we got to climb a hill. So let's climb a hill. We got the height. They told us it's going to be 2 times 10 to the 2, just right 200. So it's 200 meters. The car is now climbing at a constant speed, right? The velocity is going to be equal to 25 meters per second. And it's going to cover this whole entire distance here in, uh, what did they say? Uh, two minutes, right? So 120 seconds. Um, and while it was doing this, it had to exert a force to overcome air resistance and friction of... Now, this is not the total amount of force, I don't believe. Um, it's a little unclear, but it sounds like to me... Let's just write 500. It sounds like to me uh, that they're saying that uh, while exerting this amount of force to just... It doesn't say just overcome air resistance and friction, but I think that's what they're trying to say. All right, so, um, okay. So, in any case, uh, what we need to do again is we need to think about the same exact uh, idea. That we, we have our formula. So, the remember, the current was equal to then the energy over 0 0.95 times TV. So, what we need to do is find the energy again. So, we got two components of energy. Again, there's going to be an energy, the work energy that's required... You know, to move the car, th whatever this distance is, and that's the force that was applied to move it that particular distance. So we first got to do that, okay? So work is equal to FD. Work then is equal to 500 multiplied now by the distance. So what's the distance? Well, if the car is traveling 25 meters every single second, and then it travels the, up this, and it's constant, and it's traveling up that hill for 120 of those seconds, well, it's simply going to be then 25 multiplied by 120, right? Sometimes you don't even need the formulas. We just think about it logically. So 500 multiplied by 25 multiplied by 120. And we're going to get an answer here of about 1.5 times 10 to the, looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
six. And that's in joules, so that's an energy, okay? But that's not the total amount of energy. Why? Well, because the car also climbed this particular height. How is height and energy related? Oh my goodness, no way. Potential energy, right? And potential energy is not one half mv squared. <laughs> that's kinetic energy, Andrew. MGH, are you awake? I hope you're awake. Tell me if I'm doing something wrong. I won't be able to hear you though. So potential energy is equal to the mass. Car is 750. That's given in the problem. 9.8, the height is 200, bada bing, bada boom, plug it on in. And what do we get? So 750 times 9.8 times 200. So this is now 1.47 times 10 to the 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, 6 joules. So the total amount of energy then is the energy needed to overcome the air resistance and friction and the energy needed to raise that object's height. So add those two now together. And we're going to get 2.97. So the total here energy is going to be 2.97 times 10 to the sixth joules. That's now the value we're going to plug into this. So let's take that value and now plug it into the formula. So it's going to be 2.97 times 10 to the sixth, all divided by 0 0.95 multiplied by the time. Now remember, the time here in this part is going to be 120 seconds, not the 60 like from before. Multiply that by 12, and let's go. So we get our 2.97, right, times 10 to the sixth. Then we're going to divide it now by parenthesis 0.95 times 120 times 12. And we're going to get a value of about 2.17, 2.17 times 10 to the third. And that's in terms of not joules, but amps. And that takes care of that. All right. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are not done. There is indeed a part C. So if you're still with me, congratulations on your determination. And if you're not still with me, well, congratulate your own sanity. Except you won't be able to hear that. So maybe somebody else watching this video that knows you that has known that you stop watching, can do it for you. See, uh, to travel now a uh, constant 25 meter per second speed, uh, exerting this amount of force to overcome air resistance in this, blah, 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 blah. Uh, constant speed, exerting that force to overcome air resistance. Okay. All right, so now in this particular case, um, we have to think about it again from the energy perspective. So it's traveling at a constant uh, 25 meter per second speed, and it is exerting this particular force, right? Now, it is traveling a particular distance, but we just don't know how much that distance is, right? That's the difference in this problem. So let's go back to the main formula, all right? So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to, <clears throat> we solved this already for I. So we got E over uh, 0 0.95 T times V. Now the difference is I don't know the time. And if I don't know how long this thing is going for, then that means I cannot really plug in a time. Um, and nor can I then get an energy, right? Exact energy value. Um, but maybe there's another way, right? Maybe there's a way that instead of breaking these two up now, the E and the T, maybe we have to realize and go back to the start that power is simply energy per time. So if I do that, what I can basically then say about those two is that the formula now works out to be power over 0 0.95 times V. Now you might say, well, that still doesn't help me. I still have power, right? But we have to remember one of the formulas for power. Power is also equal to FV. In other words, the force times the velocity. This is this is where the we got to... You got to do a ton of problems and you want to also, if you haven't memorized the formulas by doing a ton of problems, you should probably sit down uh, and if you don't have a reference sheet available, you're going to have to do that. Um, we need to recall these formulas. So that's the formula that we need. So it's going to be 500. That's all it is. So basically now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do it over here. Power becomes FV. Okay. FV. And then what I'm going to do is going to plug it on in. So 500 multiplied now by the velocity of 25. Okay. And then that's going to be divided by 0.95 times then the 12 volts from the battery. And voila. So 500 times 25, all divided by parentheses 0.95 times 12. And we get about 1.10, I guess, rounding. 
times 10 to the third. All right, I'm definitely done with this problem. So hope you guys enjoyed. If it helped you out at all, hit that subscribe button, like button, you know what to do. All right, see you soon.